Hey guys, I think we're live now. Welcome to a very special stream, um, one that I had not planned on being a special stream um, until I realized that today is repeal day. So prohibition ended on today's date in, was it 1933? I probably should have planned. This is why I didn't plan a repeal day stream. <laughs> um, but in honor of that, even though we have a special topic tonight, Woodford Reserve, um, in honor of repeal day, I want to pour something that is special to me. It's not necessarily a special pour, but it's special to me. And 1933, Brandon, that's what I thought. I didn't want to say it and sound wrong. <laughs> um, what's up, everybody? What's up, Brandon? What's up, Doug? Uh, thank you guys so much for showing up tonight. Um, so what I wanted to pour tonight for my first pour to celebrate the momentous occasion is, believe it or not, Evan Williams, 1783. Some of you know, but this was the very first bottle of bourbon I bought ever um, after watching a few recommendations on YouTube, mainly from It's Bourbon Night. And yeah, this one's always kind of had a little special place in my heart. Um, and I figured why not, you know, celebrate this occasion with the whiskey that got me into bourbon. So I want to know what you guys are drinking tonight to celebrate. Um, yeah, I, I thought about bringing up like maybe like a super special pour, but at the same time I was like, you know what? I want to pull something that's special to me. So, um, what's up, Pete? Yeah, what's everybody sipping on? So, cheers to living in 2019 and not having to deal with prohibition and repeal day. Cheers. I mean, granted, I've I've kind of moved on from this whiskey, but. I still, I mean, I love Evan Williams as a brand. Um, I prefer the bottle and bond over this one now. Um, I think the higher proof really does help, but this is only 86 proof, so it's a little low proof for me, but I don't know. It's still, it has a lot of flavor that I really like, so. Oh, you guys are, you guys are hitting it hard tonight. You're doing Ledger Craig Barrel Proof, um, B519, a solid batch. Um, Old Ezra 7, Old Ezra 7 Barrel Strength. That is one that I had one bottle of. I found it once. And I never saw it again, so I should have. I should have gotten it. Um, Henry McKenna ten year. I thought about doing that one, um, but I decided to go with this one instead because both of them were kind of like special. That was like my first, not my first special bottle, which special is subjective. We'll see tonight. But um, yes. Yeah, so Brandon says, uh, yeah, solid choice. Peter says, being from Canada, prohibition is just a kin birth special. I mean, yeah. I mean, I can't. I can't imagine. Um, but. It's definitely a really cool if you look into the history of it and a lot of the distillery tours tell you about, you know, how people bended, bent the rules a little bit to get around it. I thought that's pretty cool. But, um, hey, Donnie, uh, what's up? Um, so, yeah, so we're doing some Woodford. Now, the reason I chose Woodford, one is because I have three bottles of it <laughs> in the house that I haven't reviewed. Two, Woodford, like I said, special bottles are subjective. Woodford was my first special bottle which i feel like a lot of people are probably the same way but this was the first bottle that i kind of splurged on and by splurged i mean i paid like 35 40 dollars for um so this is just the regular wood for reserve um and for a while it was my go-to whiskey before i got really into you know looking more into it. like i said i watched a review to get the recommendation for this one but i think for a while i kind of lost it took me a while to get into it, and then I'd step up to Woodford, and I was like, oh, there's a lot more flavors in here. Uh, so I think it's been a journey for me. So Woodford was a very important stepping stone for me. Um, and yes, Donnie, I have the wheat one and the malt one here to review. So I'm going to review those for you guys. Uh, Brandon says, next time we hang out, I'll tell you about Kentucky. I may be coming to the dark side with rye. Oh, uh-oh. Brandon, you've always been so, so anti-rye. Every time I try to, even when I give you good ryes, you're like, yeah, it's okay, but it's a rye. Yeah, so this is still the 1783, so I'm going to go ahead and I should have poured a little less, but <laughs> going to finish that off. Forgot to use a dumping glass, because this, usually I, I bring a rocks glass to like dump out extra whiskey, but I want to bring this out because it's my little Woodford Reserve glass. Um, I got this in a gift set. I thought it was really cool. And it's like, it's actually made by Glencairn, like it's a legit like crystal glass. I like it a lot. Um, yeah, I'm going to, I'm actually going to dump it. <laughs> I'm going to dump it in a, glint, in a um, Tribeca glass just because I, I really don't want to finish that right now. Maybe I'll return to it. Um, you're hoping the weeder shows up in Ontario. Yeah, so I, both the malt and the wheat whiskey showed up at the exact same time at my store. Um, but they, 
yeah, I've heard mixed things. Some people prefer the malt, some people prefer the wheat. And I had people telling me both. So, of course, I bought both of them. They're only $35. I, I can't complain. Um, Woodford was, for the gift set, was 35 as well. So all these are the exact same price point. So let me rinse my glass. And we'll pour some Woodford, shall we? We prefer neither. <laughs> yeah, I know, Brandon. I let Brandon try these when he was here. He was not a fan. Um, I think I like them better than you do, but <laughs> you were not a fan of them. Have any of you, I know um, someone said, they, I think it was Donnie just said he just had the wheat one. Yeah. Um, have any of you had any of the different expressions? So they have the, of course, standard Woodford bourbon. They have a Woodford Reserve Rye, which I had a long time ago. I, I wish I would have had a bottle for tonight, but I don't. Um, then they have the wheat whiskey, the malt whiskey, and they also have like an oatmeal like whiskey. I don't, I don't know much about that. It's like an oatmeal grain. I haven't ever seen that. So those are like the part of the same release series. Yeah, so let's go to just start with standard old, good old Woodford Reserve Distiller Select, which I think it says on all the bottles, yeah. So this is from Brown Foreman Distillery, um, also the guys behind Old Forester. I visited their distillery when I was in Kentucky in October. Um, didn't have time for a tour, but I did a tasting. Um, the tasting included the double oak and the rye. I did like, I did like the double oak. I liked what it had going for it in terms of oakiness, but I still felt like the standard Woodford of those three that I tried at the distillery was my favorite. I think it's because, so I think what a lot of people say about Woodford, I, I agree with. It's a well-rounded bourbon. Like it doesn't jut out in any direction being like exceptionally oaky or exceptionally fruity. It's just a good entry point, solid bourbon. If you even remotely like bourbon, you're gonna like Woodford Reserve. Um, Obviously, you may prefer something higher proof or something more complex, but in terms of standard bourbon flavors, you're going to like Woodford Reserve, I think. Um, it does have a little bit of that banana on it, though, and that's something that is a little too off-putting for me in certain whiskeys, like um, 1792 or even some Old Forester. That, that, that banana note is a little too strong for me. Woodford, I, I, can, I could revisit it tonight and see, but if, I, I don't remember it being too overwhelming for me. Um, so this comes in at 90.4 proof. Um, there's no age statement, but I, th I believe they said it was like seven to eight years old, most of their stock. Uh, mash bill is 72% corn, 18% rye, and 10% malted barley. So um, pretty pretty high corn. Um, so that, that kind of attributes to the overall roundness and the sweetness. Um, Donnie has Woodford from 2003. That's crazy. I wonder how it compares. That would be an interesting comparison to do it um, today's Woodford versus that old bottle. That would be interesting. Um kind of hard to describe yeah well i'll see if i can get into that i don't remember what you said about them i just i just know you didn't like them uh yeah woodford is what i drink when at um bww what is that um it was like a bar or something yeah but on the nose it's woodford <laughs> i i do get more of the banana on the nose um and that's a note that i'm not a huge fan of you guys know jack daniels isn't my thing because of that banana note but it does have more of a dessert quality than, oh, Buffalo Wild Wings. <laughs> I guess I, I'm not used to seeing the abbreviation for that. Yeah, so the nose, it, I, it's not oaky, for sure. It's not, it doesn't smell old or deep or rich or molasses. It smells like a sweet bourbon ball. Like, I don't know if you guys had them, but they're like a sweet milk chocolatey um, dessert that you get a lot at, at distilleries especially woodford they had bourbon balls there it's like a light fluffy dessert on the nose um maybe a little bit of like caramel like drizzled on there but it's mostly like a it's almost i mean i would say it's a little malty just the regular regular woodford so let's go ahead and try it i haven't had this in a while so i'm curious to see if i still still enjoy it so like i said it's 90.4 proof so coming from the evan williams it's a uh, Good jump up and proof. I think that's a really good proof for that. I mean, of course, barrel proof is always, you know, most of our go-to in here. But it's a really approachable proof for someone that's maybe jumping up from Evelyn 1783. It feels like a heftier whiskey. And in terms of complexity, I would say so. I mean, this one, I think, excels more in being 
um, like I said, Woodford kind of goes in one direction. It's like nothing juts out as being the prominent flavors. I think Evan Williams 7883 really shines in the oakiness, the o- oaky flavor, and even some of the baked good flavors. Um, I mean, I always liken it to Elijah Craig, same distillery. I get a lot of those same notes on the Evan Williams. But this, there's no real prominent note. There is there is a lot more oak on the flavor profile than the... Um, on the nose, because on the nose, I didn't get much oak at all. Yeah. Um, Brandon says I think it's the best bourbon at that proof point. I, I would probably agree with you. I mean, the only other 90-ish proof whiskeys, I mean, there's Maker's Mark. I'm not a fan of Sandra Maker's Mark. Um, there's Larceny. Again, I'm just saying, like, weeded bourbons, but those are the ones that come to mind. I'm sure there are a lot more that are at 90 proof, but usually I mostly see things at 86 or jump up to 100, so... Yeah, but I mean, it's there's nothing wrong with this bourbon. I mean, for thirty five dollars now, I feel like the first time I bought it, I paid more than that, like forty five or fifty. I don't know if it's just my was my area or just the store. It was a little overpriced. Um, now, of course, back then it was like, oh, this is so good. But just overall, just a really solid bourbon. Um, one that I was actually I was trying to plan. So I'm going to Las Vegas uh, next weekend, not this weekend, but next weekend. And we're actually driving this time, so I get to bring a bottle that's opened, and I don't have to worry about, like, flying with it. So I think I may bring this Woodford Reserve. I want something that's not high-proof and going to blow my head off, because I'm mainly drinking it to get drunk, I'll be honest, <laughs> in the hotel room um, before I go out, like, on the strip and stuff. But this is very sippable, and it's good. I mean, it's, it's something that's, like, it's, there's enough proof there to get you going, but at the same time, it's enjoyable. I mean, last time I went to Vegas... The only thing, I had to buy something at the liquor store there. Um, I mean, in Vegas, the drinks are free, which is great. But a lot of times, I like to pregame a little before we're going out on the strip. Um, plus, the free drinks are kind of hit or miss. Like, some places a little more open with it, some aren't. So, I like to lube up a little bit before I go out and uh, gamble and stuff. So, I think this will be the bottle I'm bringing. We'll see. So, I'm going to pour... I'm going to have a little glass here. I'm going to... Pour the standard Woodford because I do want to compare. I do want to compare it with the other options. I'm going to make sure I don't get it confused with the Evan Williams, though. Um, Woodford is on the left. Oh, Elijah. Duh. Elijah Craig is in that proof range. That's right. I mean, that would be my go to. If I had to pick between the two, it's like a favorite in that proof range. I would definitely go with Elijah Craig. That's just a personal preference. I just really, really, really love Elijah Craig. <laughs> like store picks, barrel proof, just. it's It's probably my favorite. Probably, other than Booker's, um, probably my favorite bourbon. I mean, Jim Beam, Jim Beam and Elijah Craig, or Heaven Hill, are like right there, like neck and neck for me. So, yeah, so let's go ahead and do, I think we'll do the wheat one first. Um, let me see, which one came out? I think the wheat one actually came out this year. Yeah, yeah, okay. So we'll do the malt one first. Yeah, Elijah Craig is 94. We'll do malt since that came out first. Let me rinse the glass a little bit. Blind tasting of Elijah Craig, Larceny, B- Woodford. Yeah, like a good like 90-ish proof flight. That would be awesome. I mean, I feel like I would struggle. I mean, I think all of those are solid options. I mean, Larceny used to be one of my favorites. It kind of, I kind of not lost interest in it, but I had a bottle of it that I wasn't a huge fan of. But um, bought me a bottle of Angel's Envy in Vegas on the Strip and paid 100 so like the the rye like the that's like a good price for the rye right or it's I don't know I've I've never bought a bottle of Angel Envy I've I've tried their bourbon at a tasting and um, I don't think I've ever had their rye so oh wait wait for a pour oh god I hope you meant a bottle not a pour <laughs> oh that would be ah so let's let's move on to the malt um this is the blue label one and this one's also at ninety point four proof it's the exact same proof um yeah it doesn't really tell you much on the label but I'll tell you guys a little bit about it. Oh, tell, uh, okay, so it does say something on the back. Okay, for a bottle. Okay, thank God, because I was a little worried. It says, the art of making fine whiskey first took place on the site of the Woodford Reserve Distillery. Uh, I don't know if that, that's totally accurate as being the first place, but we'll go along with it. A National Historic Landmark. In 1812, this unique Kentucky straight malt whiskey. Oh, that in 1812. They put a weird... It's not me being drunk. They put a weird comma there. They said took place on the site of the Woodford Reserve Distillery, comma, in 1812. 
This unique, that's like a weird place. This unique Kentucky straight malt whiskey has a soft, sweet, nutty character that embodies our spirit of innovation. That doesn't tell you anything. I thought it might have told you a little bit more, but I do have some info about it here. So I'll tell you once I pour it. Um, okay, yeah, so around 50. So yeah, Vegas, I mean, those of you who have been, they know the upcharge is ridiculous. They're on everything. I found a really crappy liquor store that I went to. Um, the only bourbon they had was Jim Beam. Actually, no, I take that back. The only affordable bourbons they had were Jim Beam and Evan Williams Black Label. Those were decently priced. On the top shelf, they had Little Book, Booker's, like all this crazy stuff. I'm like, oh my God, like there's all these bottles that like I love and I'm looking for. But then I realized that they were charging basically secondary pricing for it. I'm like, no one of those bottles are just sitting on the shelf. So, so yeah. So I stuck with Evan Williams for that trip. Oh, wow. This one's completely different on the nose. I mean... Honestly, there I can't complain about Angel's Envy. I like I said, I've had the regular bourbon. I just had it as a tasting. It was fine, but I mean, it's a good gift bourbon. I mean, it's a beautiful bottle. Sometimes it's in a box too. Um, that might be just the rye, but yeah, it's 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 one of those ones that's a little gimmicky, and people see it as like, oh, that'll be a good gift bourbon. Someone recently asked me what is a good bourbon to give as a gift for Christmas, um, and I told them I think the best bourbon, at least that's available in my area, which I know some of you guys struggle to find it. I think um, Colonel E.H. Taylor Small Batch. It's a $40 bottle, um, readily available here in California. I know people struggle to get it in like Kentucky and stuff, but it's it's literally everywhere in California. So, um, oh, Peter, you gifted you gifted the um, E.H. Taylor. It's a good choice. It comes in a cool little um, tube. And yeah, so uh, Brandon says regular Angel's Envy isn't worth the price personally. I, I've never bought a bottle. Um, I just had one pour of it, and I didn't feel convinced to buy it. So that that's that's what I think. Oh, what's up? What's up, guys? Sorry, I missed your message. Um, good to see you. We're on. We're about to start the Woodford Malt Whiskey. We just did the regular standard Woodford. Um, so this malt whiskey is interesting. Came out in 2018. It is, nine, like I said, 90.4 proof. Um, 51% malted barley, 47% corn, and 2% rye. So barely legal but still like malted barley that's like a rare one that's like you know in an american whiskey as the main ingredient gotcha sorry sorry peter i was confused but yeah i think each Taylor um small batch if you can find it is a great bottle so and angels envy i mean i'm sure i just i just don't have enough experience with it to say either way so yeah the malt whiskey i mean so the reason i bought this was i asked a group of people um most of you guys may have been in that group just a little <laughs> um which was their favorite. And a lot of people said they went with the malt whiskey because it had a lot of like, it was like a chocolate malted milk ball, which is the description I got. And of course that enticed me because I love Whoppers. Um, but yeah, I get that on the nose a lot. It's like a, I don't, I don't know how to describe it. It's, it's different because I mean, I don't have much experience with malt malt whiskey uh, i mean obviously like scotch and stuff but this is a different beast this isn't like a scotch at all it's like it i mean i would say it is very similar to a malted milk ball but it's not it doesn't have that sweetness i'm gonna go ahead and taste it because on the nose I'm, I'm not getting enough distinct notes to be able to tell you what i think of it i think i see why you may not like it brandon that is a very grainy, like, it's like I literally just ate a grain. Like, it's, <laughs> it's like dusty. Like, sometimes I get a note dusty corn. It's like that, but it doesn't have the sweetness of a corn. It's like a dusty, yeah, it's like you, like, ate, like, I don't know what barley tastes like by itself, but I imagine it probably tastes pretty similar to how this tastes. It doesn't taste like a distillate from barley. It just tastes like barley, um, I imagine. So maybe that's what you don't like about it, Brandon. Honestly, I'm kind of a fan of it. I kind of like that uniqueness to it. I mean, this isn't what I would recommend, you know, a beginner get into because it's, it's, it's definitely something weird and like not much else out there like it. But yeah, I mean, I think I think it's interesting. Um, do I prefer the regular Woodford though? We'll see. Let me just get one more sip of it. Yeah, I mean, funky, I guess I would say maybe. I just... I don't dislike it as much as you disliked it. I think, I think it's like, okay, so when the person described it to me as like a malted milk ball, like, like a Whopper candy, I think what confused me is, um, oh, by the way, thank, 
for those of you that are here and you haven't liked this video, I really appreciate like, sorry, I just saw a like pop up. I'm like, oh, someone liked the video. I was like, oh wait, I should probably tell people to like it. So yeah, if you guys could like it, you don't have to, but if you could, that'd be awesome. So yeah. So it's like a malted milk ball, but without the chocolate, if that makes sense. I don't have the sweet chocolate flavor that I would expect. And it doesn't have very much sweetness to begin with. Yeah, it's like, it's sweet, like at first, it's like a sweet, grainy sweetness. But I don't know, I think it would be a good experimental, I almost said bourbon, whiskey, if you're curious to see what a malt whiskey, a 51% malted barley whiskey tasted like. I think this is a good way to try it. I don't think I prefer, let me go back to the regular, regular Woodford just to see. Thank you guys for the likes. I'm sorry. I just love, I love, I have a little screen here that pops up when people like the video. So M much, much appreciated. So, so let me just go back to the regular Woodford and just taste it real quick. So the regular Woodford tastes a little not as this tastes like it's like a lower proof i know it's not but it tastes like it is i think this one bites a little bit more the malted barley honestly so this is coming from someone that just appreciates complex and different flavors the my problem with regular woodford is it tastes too simple for me and that sounds elitist i don't mean it that it's too simple it's just for my taste i like people things to be really interesting i think i prefer the malt over the regular woodford only because it's such an interesting different flavor Yeah, I mean, it's not like world's better, and I'm not saying get this instead of Woodford. I think it's worth a try, especially if you're not familiar with malted whiskeys like I'm not familiar with it. So that's what I got to say about the malt one. Um, have you guys had it? What do you think? Brandon, <laughs> you just think it's funky, so I'm not going to ask you. But has anyone else had the malted um, Woodford? Um, the barrel proof is... Um, oh, you're talking about the E.H. Taylor. Yeah, same for me, Brandon. I have not seen E.H. Taylor barrel, barrel Proof. Um, Crown Royal Cast 16. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, I would love E.H. Taylor Barrel Proof. If anyone has a sample, I actually had a sample of it, and it was delicious, but I would love to have a bottle of it. So, okay, you guys haven't had the malt one. So, yeah, I think give it a try, especially if you like regular Woodford. It's not that far off, but there's something really unique about it that I kind of dig. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this glass. I always feel like I need to bring more bottles out to review because, like, I'm almost on the last one. And I'm like, oh, it's only been 23 minutes. But then when I bring too many bottles, it's like I rush them and I get drunk and like, I get sloppy, as Brandon knows. So, yeah, just take my time, chill. Maybe we'll go back to the regular Woodford once we try the last one. And then we can do, like, a not blind because they obviously taste different. But, um, yeah. So, I'm trying to think. Is there any interesting bourbon news to talk about? I should probably plan, like, a little bit more than um just reviewing things i would love to like bring up topics and have discussions with you guys brandon mentioned to me a couple weeks ago um it'd be awesome to have guests on um i'm still looking into the process to do that I've, he's mentioned an app to me i would love to like either take calls or like literally share the screen with you guys and, like do a split screen thing that would be so fun i would love to do that so i need to look into that um i only have like so i'm gonna be out of town next week i'll be here for the stream but then the following week i'll be out of town um no, no, I'll be here. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I'll be here. And then after that, I'm out of town until like the end of the year. So we'll figure it out. StreamYard is the app. Yeah. So I'll look into that. Um, maybe even if on the, one of those days where like I'm about to go out of town on vacation, just have like a group group stream. That'd be really fun. Yeah. I need to, it's hard to judge how much I'm pouring in this glass. Cause I don't usually use this glass. Let's start playing our next live together. Yeah. Well, I like your idea about doing an exclusive, like Kentucky exclusive bourbons, because we have a lot of the same ones. Um, but I feel like we need to swap a couple samples so we like totally have all the same ones. That would be awesome. Measure my fingers, yeah. Well, that would be easy to do if I had two hands and I could like do this while I'm pouring. I mean, come on, man. Come on, you should know. Just kidding. <laughs> So, let's move on to the wheat whiskey. 
Ooh. Use your eyes. I guess I could. Yeah, but I can't. I can't. I haven't gotten that skilled yet. Okay. So the wheat whiskey, I think, is the most interesting story-wise or mash bill wise. Um, the wheat whiskey is technically a four grain whiskey, which are like highly prized in the whiskey community. Um, not really sure why, but it's probably just because they're unique. So this mash bill is 52% wheat, 21% malted barley, 18% corn, and sorry, that, doesn't, that math doesn't add up. We'll just say that's 20%. <laughs> the, the, the math, it must be like summarizing this article because that's like, that does not add up. 52% wheat, 21% malted barley, 18% corn, and 8% rye. So there is very little rye content and very little corn content. This is mostly wheat and malted barley. So I thought that was super interesting. I have never seen anything like that before. Uh, Brent has a few more ideas. Yeah, let me know. Four grains are a pain in the butt. Um, 80 laws is four grain and drain cleaner. Oh, really? See, I've never had that. That's what I said. It's kind of hit or miss. I think it's, a lot of companies like to latch onto that marking. Like, it's a four grain. I mean, even if it's not good. But luckily, Woodford didn't. Woodford called this a... Come on, focus. My focus has been really bad today. I think it's because, like, you can see me in the background. Anyways, it's a Kentucky Straight Wheat Whiskey. Even though it's technically a four grain. They could probably call it a four grain. I'm not 100% sure of that, but I'm pretty sure they can call it a four grain. Um, I've heard E.H. Taylor four grain is amazing. Never had it. Any of the premium E.H. Taylors I've never had. I had a sample of the barrel proof and anything else. I've just had the small batch. So I, I've heard amazing things about all the exclusive E.H. Taylors. So let's try. I didn't save any of the um, wheat whiskey, but if this is some... Or sorry, I didn't save any of the malt whiskey, but... If I have to go back and forth, I'm going to tell you which guys, which one of these I prefer by the end of the stream. So, $700, four grain. Ugh, no. There's a place in Studio City, um, which is by me in North Hollywood, that has um, all of the EHL. They even have, like, the Tornado one, but they are ridiculous. They're over secondary pricing, so it's it's stupid pricing. But if you want to see a bottle, you can, like, see it. Ask people for samples. I did that, actually. Uh, I did a stream recently where I did exclusively samples, and... Yeah, I made an open invitation for samples. So um, if you have any samples for me, maybe next meetup we can exchange some samples because I love doing samples on the show and I love giving people shout outs. I, it's always fun. I think Juan, uh, I'm not sure if he's here tonight, but he's going to send me out like a blind sample soon. So that'll be really fun. So yeah, love samples. They're so much fun. And plus it's super helpful for me because it's like I don't have to commit to a whole bottle. <laughs> if, I, if I like something and I if I like a sample, I'll go buy a bottle, but... Rich usually has some. Okay, yeah. I think he said he was going to get me samples. Maybe not. I thought he said he was going to send samples. Oh, no, wait. Was he the one that sent me the... Someone sent me a bunch of Four Rose samples. I think it may have been him. I think it was, yeah. So I owe him some samples. On the nose, the wheat whiskey smells so much better. Um, it is sweet. It's a little, it's a little more oaky than any of them. Um... That's, it honestly, it doesn't smell that much different than a bourbon, like a really good bourbon. On the nose, it's got a lot more of those deeper, darker wood notes that I get on older whiskeys. I don't, I don't know the age statement on this, but I get a lot of those, like, vanilla. There's a little fruitiness there. It's like almost like a, like a baked apple pie or something there. I do like the smell on this one a lot more than the other two, um... So there's a Canadian whiskey that's four grain. Oh, interesting. That's, um, I really need to dabble more into Canadian whiskey. I just got burned by a bunch of not so great Canadian whiskey. Um, I would love to try it like a over a hundred or like a hundred proof or more Canadian whiskey. That's what my biggest thing with Canadian whiskey. It was too light. It was too like floral, too pretty for me personally. Um, but yeah, I th I'm sure there's stuff out there in Canada that's amazing. So on the nose, this one wins hands down, but let me go ahead and taste it. Let's see. Or is this a different? Yeah, I mean, maybe. I could be wrong, but to me, this is I'm getting a lot of sweetness on this one. Hmm. So, 
I'll be honest, my my first this is my first wheat whiskey. Um, actually, that's a lie. It's, I don't remember. So I had you guys know I had the Smooth Ambler um, Big Level, and I'm trying to remember if that was just a weeded bourbon or a wheat whiskey. I think it was a wheat whiskey, honestly. Um, yeah, I think that was the only one that I had that was labeled other than just like a bourbon. So I think this tastes completely different. Banana nut bread is a good good thing to say because it, it okay. So big big level is a weeded bourbon. Gotcha. Yeah. So this one is. Usually on weeded bourbons, I get like a freshly baked bread note. Um, I know that sounds like stereotypical because like weeded bourbon, but I get a lot of really strong bread, like fresh bread notes on them, um, which I think like Weller 107, even Weller Foolproof, which Brendan and I reviewed um, a couple weeks ago. Got a lot of freshly baked bread on this one though. It does taste more like a like a dense bread. Um, and that's what you, you said, like a banana nut bread. Yeah, that or like a fruitcake almost. Like, I see where you're going with the banana nut bread, though. Yeah, I mean, I've always thought Old Forester pro- or Brown Foreman products have like that banana note on them. It's not overwhelming at all in these. Personally, I'm not. A, I'm not against them. <laughs> like, they're not like off-putting like some Brown Foreman products are for me. But that's nice. But the finish on that one is just not very good it's not very long it's not very oaky it's just kind of like a a bitter like an astringent taste in my mouth um which is disappointing because i love the nose on it um peter says the best canadian whiskey remains in canada lot 40 calf strength oh that sounds amazing i i would like to try lot 40 but sometime um yeah you guys have like calf strength whiskey i've never seen that down here it must not make it so maybe i'll go to canada i don't know i'm not i'm not that far but yeah, I'm, I'm sure Canada has a lot more to offer than what typical Canadian is. Crown Royal, uh, Canadian Club, <laughs> or Canadian. I've never had Canadian Misk, but I'm sure it's delightful. I had a 12 year Canadian Club that was my favorite Canadian that I've ever bought, but I still don't think I would buy another bottle of it. That's a good point. Um, tasting this one blind, I don't. I would not. I would be thrown for a loop. That that's. I would probably, I have no idea what I would think that is. I'm not going to even try to guess what I would guess that is. Man, maybe I should have blinded these three. No, I, I think I can still get a good idea of which I actually prefer because they're so different. So let me go back to the standard Woodford um, before I make a decision. I, I just want to keep comparing them to the standard Woodford. Mm. Definitely prefer standard Woodford over the wheat. Which is sad because I really wanted to like it. But on the nose, the wheat beats it hands down. But I'm just more of a fan of those classic notes that I get in the regular Woodford over the wheat. Now, that's not saying I prefer regular Woodford over the malt. I'll do one final taste test before we make the decision. So I saw they released a 42 year. God, I can't even imagine. I know I had Little Book 2, which had a 40, it's like like a 40 year old Canadian whiskey in it, didn't it? Um, but of course it also had other things in it. So I don't really know what that true flavor profile of that, that old whiskey was, but, um, uh, Christopher said my favorite Woodford is the batch proof that I have not, I think I may have had it once at one of our, um, meetups. I don't remember specifically how much I liked it. I really do want to try the chocolate grain one. Um, the chocolate malt that just came out, it's just, it's a hundred dollars. And like, I've spent, you guys know I've spent way way too much on money money on whiskey lately um and for those of you that don't know i was fortunate enough now fingers crossed they don't get canceled i was able to get two um thomas h handies from bevmo this year they're both on order we'll see if they get canceled but i, I suppose i have two of those so that was 160 each with shipping and everything um i got a new red breast 14 year old um store pick um it's like a new small batch program they're doing with a bunch of different stores and my store got one in so it's a 14 year old cast strength red breast it was 100 but i love red breast you guys know i need to do another irish episode soon i had to get that so it was 100 and i got two more knob creek 15 year old picks uh i've spent well over 500 dollars in the past week on whiskey oh it hurts 
But there are so many good things coming out, you guys. Like, I want to I wanna taste them, and I want to review them, and I know I won't be able to get them again. So that's my reasoning. So, uh, yeah, I... I need to, I need to stop. Um, so Donnie says the taste of the wheat was nothing like you described, but it was the only whiskey I had that night. That's that's true. I'm I'm comparing it directly with the the malt and the standard um, standard Woodford. So I'm curious, Donnie, if you were, were to revisit it, let me know which you prefer because I I just think I like the flavor profile of the regular Woodford better than the wheat. Um, I'm curious to hear what your thoughts are on it. Um, okay, chocolate malt is so good. I've heard I've heard good things, but a hundred dollars, like ah, that's. I know it's more expensive in some places, but it's a hundred here. Um, forty year Canadian Club, hundred percent corn, thirteen year Alberta Premium Castron, and the nine year old Knob Creek Castron. Okay, gotcha. That that makes sense. So, yeah, that's interesting. I thought I was like a forty year old rye, but I don't know what I was thinking. Um, Redbreast twelve year at Costco. Yes, I love Redbreast twelve year. Um, Castron though. I mean, I always buy the cast strength over the regular red breast. I think cast strength does so much for Irish whiskey, and I love it. You said that this week in beer. Yeah. Um, Joseph, what's up? Sorry, the chat's like going fast. I'm trying to catch up. Red breast 21. Oh, that sounds amazing. I've never had it, but uh, bucket list. That's on my bucket list to try that one day. Um, if you have a sample of it, Peter, I would love to take a sample. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, I, I just... I, I, I love Redbreast. Sorry, I was reading down further. Um, Diana bought a wood for wheat tonight, so you'll have it soon. Oh, you guys are like, you guys like it. I'm, I feel bad. Like, I don't want to like, I'm not trying to diss it. I don't think it's bad. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm second guessing myself because you all are like, oh, I loved it. I'm like, wait, I don't, we can all have different opinions. I mean, I'm, I don't think any of these are bad. Brandon thinks they all suck. So if you want to get mad at someone, Brandon said they all suck balls. So that's on Brandon, not me. Um, what's up, Steven? <laughs> Everyone's getting ganging up on me because I don't like the wheat one that much. To me, it's just really sweet. It's it's nice and thick on the palate, but as soon as you swallow it, there's no finish at all. 12-year cast strength is right there for half the price. That's that's a good point. So, Peter, the cast strength right here is like $60. The reason I got the 14 year is one, because it was limited to under 300 bottles. Two, I really wanted to see what an older cast strength version of Redbreast, which they do different finishing. They do it in a X bourbon barrel and they use like X sherry barrel. Um, it just sounds really unique. And honestly, I just feel like I, I'm gonna justify it at least once. Otherwise, if, if it's not that much better than the regular 12 cast strength, I won't buy it again, but I feel like I had to give it a try. I, I didn't want to miss out on trying it. So <laughs> Brandon says, let's see how it is. Um, so you bought a bottle. Yeah, well, Donnie, let me know. Um, I, again, you guys may like it, so. We both think Old Forester sucks. There you go, there you go. So we don't hate each other. Um, Steven hates the profile of Brown Foreman products. Um, hey, what's up? Pedro and Darcy, welcome to the stream. I'm almost wrapping up, but, um, good to see you. Um, we're gonna do, like, a little question thing at the end if anyone has any questions, so. Um, drinking the 1920 right now. Joseph, I said earlier, I wish I would have thought ahead of time about Prohibition and Repeal Day. I would have totally picked up a bottle of that to review. Um, love to pick up the 14-year-old red breast. Okay, so someone someone says it, so. I believe the 12-year-old cast strength is 38 at Costco. Brandon, no, no, that's the regular 12-year. The red breast 12 cast strength, I've ne even when I've seen it like ridiculously underpriced, it's always been 55, and it's, it's normally 60 to 65. So unless you see some freaking amazing deal, if so, buy them all. Um, yeah, so need more drinks. I, I didn't bring out any extra bottles, but um, might, I might go back to this guy to wrap it up. Um, <laughs> uh, give Daniel single barrel, barrel proof a try. Um, I have a bottle of that. I, did I review that for you guys? I don't, did I not review that for you guys? I have a bottle of a Jack Daniels single barrel store pick barrel proof. Um, that is really good. I'm just still not a huge fan of the Jack Daniels profile which is very similar to the brown foreman profile i mean do you guys do you guys get that too that same banana note in brown foreman products i get that on jack daniels and that's what kind of kills it for me yeah so yeah <laughs> yeah brandon if you go tomorrow and you see the the 12 year the 12 year cast strength for that price um yeah so uh da -da -da -da. sorry i'm trying to catch up yeah grab them all for that cheap Jack Daniels, bleh. Yeah, so it's it's very, it's very, 
if you're a Jack Daniels fan, you will love the barrel proof. You would love the single barrel store picks. Um, but that banana note, am I anti-banana? No, actually, no, I'm not anti-banana. I actually ate a banana this morning. Um, no instant, no, no innuendo there. Um, you got, Brandon, you said you got a bottle. You mean of the Jack Daniels barrel proof, like a different single barrel? Yeah, that'd be cool. Um, I'll probably bring mine to the next meetup. Try it blind, Clifton. Um, that's a good point. Donnie, I'll have to do that. Maybe not on a stream, but I'll do them blind and I'll let you know what I think. Um, just going off of first impressions, I think I prefer the standard. But let me finish off the wheat, and I'm going to go back to the malt. I'm going to see if I like the malt better or the regular Woodford better. Flintstones. No, I don't get Flintstones on that. I get Flintstones on Dickel. Dickel brings out all the Flintstones vitamins. Um, fake banana. Yeah, well, I say, I say banana runts, Stephen. Um, like the, the runts candy. I get that note. Not so much on Woodford. I said earlier, Woodford kind of does it okay. Like, I don't mind drinking Woodford. But Old Forester products, everyone I've had except Birthday Bourbon, by the way. That's an exception. Birthday Bourbon, I think the extra age on that one and the proof covers up that banana note. But most Old Forester products I've ever had, that, like you said, fake banana flavor is just too much. Um, and I still get the same thing on um, Jack Daniels. It might be a little more like real banana, but it's still banana. <laughs> The wheat, I'll, I'll tell you this, Donnie. The wheat, when it first hits the palate, it tastes like it's going to be amazing. I just don't like how quickly the finish, it hits you and it's like, gone. There's no finish there. And I feel like these other two had a bit longer finish. I'm a sucker for a finish, like a good finish. Um, that's why I like barrel-proof whiskeys. I mean, you guys know. Um, if something just lingers and lingers on the palate and the back of the tongue and the throat, I am all for that, so... Licorice on Old Forester. That's interesting. I it's, I did a tasting of it. By the way, this could have just been this. I'm not going to fully diss Old Forester, but the tasting I did of Old Forester, the pours were in little plastic cups. They were this much, and they had been sitting out for probably the 30 minutes to an hour before we got there by the person that was setting up the tasting. It was the most disappointing tasting I've ever gone to in my life. Again, the girl was really nice, and I felt bad for her because I could tell people were kind of pissed. But... If you have a little plastic cup and you're pouring whiskey that's like that much in it, it's going to evaporate before people get there. And it just all tasted awful. The 1910, the 1920, the all that whole like lineup of like the age ones, like the date ones, it just all tasted the same, flat, boring, gross. And then we had birthday bourbon. I was like, oh, this is good. So I may need to give my own tasting of Old Forester soon. It was just the tasting I went to. It just was not well executed and it made me hate all of their products. So, <laughs> um... Oh, first birthday bourbon tastes like ginseng and barrels. That, I mean, that's probably a good point. I, I didn't think about that when I had it, but yeah, it was delicious. Um, short finish. Easy drinker. That's true. Woodford's an easy drinker. Jack Daniels is banana, but it's like banana cream pie to me, which I'm okay with. Gotcha. Quit throating your whiskey. <laughs> what? Uh, have you had this year's birthday bourbon? Everyone says this year's release is better than previous years. The one that I had was this year's. Um, last one you had was 2013 pretty good yeah i had this year's and i think it was just because i was coming off of that really bad tasting that the birthday bourbon was amazing so yeah so no i'm not saying the whiskey row tastes bad i'm just saying my experience doing the whiskey row was awful because they'd been sitting in little plastic cups and the pores were this small i'm not saying they're all bad i would love to revisit them and i need to revisit 1920 soon so yeah I mean, honestly, if you're not a, if, if you're not a big fan of Old Forester, then you probably won't love the Birthday Bourbon. I'm not a big fan of Old Forester, but I like the Birthday Bourbon. But if you think you can trade it for something better, or you know, sell it or whatever you want to do with it, um, I think that that's totally fair too. Yeah, Old Forester is like one of those controversial ones. Like, there are a lot of people that don't like it at all. There's also a lot of people that love it, that swear by 1920. So I think it's just one of those flavor profiles that's so unique that a lot of people, including myself, gravitate either towards hating it or loving it. So you enjoy the tour. I did not make the tour when I was in Kentucky. I wanted to, but they were closed the one day I had time to do it, so... So I'm going to pour a little bit more of the malt. I'm going to decide if I want the malt, if I like the malt better or the regular Woodford. Um, 
I've heard Joseph. I've heard of that blend actually. So um, my store got in more than 1910, and it was just like on the shelves. But I I was looking up reviews, and people said it's someone literally said it's only good if you mix it with the 1920s. So I didn't buy it because like that I already spent so much, as you guys have heard. Uh, the tour is fabulous. Yeah, next time I'm in Kentucky, um, I'll have to do that tour because I really want to. I just I just missed the tour. So so the malt gives me more of those old Forester banana vibes. Yeah, I mean, definitely, compared to the bourbon. The bourbon, I think, covers it up a lot better with wood. There's a lot more wood notes on the bourbon. Bourbon is just solid. It's nothing special. Um, but I could, like I said, I, I want to bring this to Vegas. I could drink this all day and be totally fine. The malt, though... It's like grainy. It's super grainy. I know I said that last time, but it's like, it's not off-putting. It's just different. It's like a young, so you guys know how like young whiskeys, young bourbons have like a lot of grainy corn notes on them or even young rice. You get that too. This has that, but with the malt, and I don't know if it's young or what, but it's just like a little overwhelmingly grainy that I don't know if great, if that makes sense. Does that make sense to you guys when I say grainy? Um, it's like literally chewing on Barley, even though I've never had barley. I imagine this is what chewing a barley tastes like. It's good, though. It's really... This is a tough one, you guys. I don't know if I could say if I prefer regular Woodford or the malt. I think the malt, probably just because it's more interesting. And there's a lot more $35 bottles of bourbon I can buy that are more complex than Woodford, I'll just be honest. I think I'd probably t pick the malt over standard Woodford. And also pick both of them over the wheat. Sorry, guys. It's just personal preference. I, I'm not big on the wheat, but I would love to revisit them and do a blind tasting sometime for sure. Uh, yeah, so yeah, that tour sounds awesome. I got to do that. Um, you say go, If you go to Vegas, go to the Total Wine on the Strip. It's fantastic. I, I'm driving this time, so I may be able to actually. I wasn't planning to go bourbon shopping, but maybe I should. <laughs> I, I, I need to stop spending money, you guys. It's, it's, it's a problem. Um, Donnie says it usually likes white dogs, so maybe grainy is okay to me. That's fair. I do. Honestly, that was one of my favorite parts of going to Kentucky, trying the white dog at the different distilleries. Um, it's very, I mean, now that you mention that, it, it does have, on the nose, it's like, it does smell like white dog. Yeah, Donnie, totally. If you like white dog, I, I didn't really even think to make that comparison before, but... It, it does remind me a lot of White Dog. Even So most White Dog that I tried were very corn forward. So that's the little difference there. But this one is more of like the rest of the grains. Like they, they definitely shine through. So miss going with, yeah, really just like Statesman. I had statement, Statesman once. I wasn't a fan. <laughs> you appreciate being my bad peer pressure. You guys all are. All of you in that group. You guys suck. But you guys are also awesome. So. Jim Beam's White Dog was very good. I did not try Jim Beam's White Dog. I tried the White Dog from um, Buffalo Trace, and then I tried the White Dog from... I've tried the Maker's White Dog before, which was awesome. Um, and then I had the White Dog from Peerless, and it was there. I'm pretty sure it was their rye... It was probably their rye White Dog. Um, Peerless and... and um, so Peerless gave it to us at cast strength, like literally like off the still... By the way, I totally recommend the Peerless Tour if you guys haven't done it. That was so cool. My favorite one of the night, or of the trip. Um, but Maker's um, White Dog is really good, too. Uh, where you can get nose of Master's Keep in Vegas at MSRP? Oh, you know where you get most of Master's Keep in Vegas? Master's Keep, it's just a little too pricey for me right now. Um, if you want a bottle, I might stop by there and get you one, but I, it's not for me. Picked up my third C918 backup bottle. Might have to go back for a fourth. Joseph, I have three backup bottles of it too. I totally understand. And unfortunately, I'm pretty sure California is drier than now. I haven't seen it in a long time. But totally don't regret that at all because it's my favorite one of all the um, Elijah Craig Barrel Brews I've ever had. So yeah, do not blame you at all for that. Oh, interesting, Donnie. You've drank moonshine longer than bourbon. That's really interesting. So, so like, legit moonshine or, like, store-bought moonshine that's, like, 40 proof? I'm curious because 
I honestly, before I bought my first bottle of bourbon, which was this, I bought the cheap 40 proof moonshine. No, no, it was higher proof. No, it was like, it was one of the ones that was like, it had like fruit in it. Like those, I don't, it's like, it's like old smoky or whatever, but it was actually higher proof. And I remember it being so off putting, like, oh, so strong, but I would love to revisit that. But it's probably so sweet, so. Stephen had three backups of B517. That was before I got into Elijah Craig Barrel Proof, so I, I have no idea what that tastes like. Peerless is so expensive for three year old rye. I'll say, Peter, I, I, um, did not buy a bottle of Peerless while I was there. I didn't try. I didn't buy their bourbon or their rye. I did really, really like their products, but their pricing's high. I mean, they're they're a craft distiller that makes sense, but I don't think I would pay that much for a bottle. But I just think the tour itself, even if you don't, you know, even if you don't want to buy yourself a bottle, do the tour because those people there are super. They're all. It's such a small team. They're all involved in all levels of the production. Even our tour guide was like literally like one of the employees that like some days he's a tour guide, some days he's like mixing together the mash. Like, it's crazy how small scale they are for such a popular name brand. Not name brand, but you know what I'm saying. Like a well known, well recognized distillery. So, even if you don't buy it, go check it out. Um, Donnie's going to a Nelson Greenbrier, which is Bell Mead on Saturday. Meeting. Adam. Oh, that's. Oh, that sounds awesome. Yeah, he's he's supposed to be shipping me my barrels or my bottles soon, so um, let me know how that is. I'm excited to give it a try. Um, your cat, Chrissy, finds my voice soothing. She's sitting on your lap. <laughs> Thank you. I guess, um, yeah, my cat, I lock out of the room because he's so annoying, as you guys have seen. He likes to jump and walk all across my desk and knock everything over, so. 100 Proof Moonshine. That's probably what I had, Donnie, but it was also when I was in college, and I can't say I can relate to that now. So I'd like to revisit it though. Um, I did buy a new riff pick from Adam. Uh, he hasn't shipped it to me yet. Moonshine's not flavored neutral grain spirit. Moonshine's made for corn. Yeah, legit moonshine. Yeah. Um, C917. Oh, that sounds awesome. If you guys want to send me a sample, talk about samples, um, I would love to sample some older Elijah Craig. So if you guys have it and you can send it my way, I will happily review it on the show, give you a shout out. Um, if you're in part of the group chat on Facebook and you want to send me a sample, let me know. I'll give you my address. If you're not, um, if you're just like on YouTube, I think you can message me on YouTube. If you can't, um, I'm always available on Twitter. Twitter and Instagram, my name is CliftonMCDNL. So it's like my last name, McDaniel, but without the vowels. So you look me up on Twitter, Instagram, message me there, give you my address and to ship me stuff. So I would love, I would love to review stuff, so... Moonshine is delicious. Uh, wish it was that easy like getting, wish it was as easy as getting actual whiskey. Yeah, I would love to try legit moonshine. I mean, even like most white dog that's bottled is like proofed down. It's like disappointing. Like I want to try like legit off the still stuff. Uh, guy says here in Indy we have Hotel Tango Craft Distillery. Uh, a small three hundred seventy five bottle for Christmas for after dinner social. Awesome. Yeah, I mean. Craft distilleries, they can be really good and they can also be really bad. Most of them that source are and are transparent about it, I totally respect and enjoy. Then those of those of them, those ones that are distilling their own stuff, I'm picky about because so many of them try to release it so early. They're like, we have a bourbon, but it's a two year old bourbon and it tastes like corn. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like so many distilleries try to rush out product and I'm not a fan of that. New Riff does it absolutely right. Um, what is the other one? Uh, Steven, what was the one you were, you were talking about that you just got? Wood, not Woodenville. Wood. What is the other one? The other craft distillery in Kentucky. I'm trying to think of what they're called. I, my mind's blanking now. Um, you'll give me a sample of Light Barrel Proof from last year at Meetup. So I've had the C918, and I think I had the A118. Um, so I think I'm good there, and I think I prefer the C918 definitely better. But Joseph sounds like polishing a knot. Get you, get you one, Joseph. I know a store. Might. Joseph, I owe you samples, by the way. Um, I have. I'm gonna send those probably next week. So I'll get those to you, hopefully before Christmas. Uh, da, 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 da. Wax my own knob creek. So I did. I passed up waxing my own knob creek at Jim Beam because. It was just like a regular single barrel, um, Knob Creek, 
And I feel like it was kind of gimmicky. And I had a limited supply of bottles to bring home. So I did not wax my own Knob Creek. But um, if, if you don't have a limit of bottles you're bringing home and you're driving, go for it. But I, I just was flying back and I had, I knew I could only carry like six 750 liter bottles, milliliter bottles. So New Riff is awesome. Wilderness Trail. Thank you, Stephen and Joseph. Yeah, that was the one that I couldn't think of. They do it. They do an awesome job with what they put out. Joseph says C918 is the best electric barrel proof ever. I it's the best one I've had. I don't know if I'd say ever best one I've ever had. I have not seen C919 yet, um, Donnie. I'm also seeking one, so hopefully they make it out our way eventually. But no, Joseph, I, I did. I've been meaning to send you samples. I I kind of I'm waiting till the new um, 15 year old Knob Creeks come in because I would like to send you one of those, but I'm not sure when they're coming in, so I'll have to double check that. But not enough space in my bag. Yeah, it's when you're flying, it's it's tough. So the malt on the nose, it definitely develops a bit more. It, it gets a lot more of that like malty flavor the more it sits in the glass. Yeah, so I I don't know if I ever picked which one was my favorite. I think I I probably did pick. I think I would pick the malt just because it's the most interesting. But regular Woodford is perfectly fine for someone getting into bourbon or someone that wants a good solid bourbon so yeah delicious i mean especially after like three or four drinks in like regular woodford just tastes great so that's why it's my vegas bottle because after like three drinks of this i'll be good and i'll enjoy it so um this way i have to ship I, I did not ship last time but i've heard i've heard that's like a pro tip like for next time um you can always ship bottles back so that's, that's true. Uh, Donnie's overrun with 13, 15 year old Knob Creek store picks. Yeah, but you realize that they are, they have kind of stopped that program. All of the recent store picks I've seen are nine years, nine to 10 years. That's why I think my store had these ahead of time, but they held off on releasing them because they realized, oh wait, they're not doing that anymore. So if you like those older Knob Creek picks, which I love the old Knob Creek picks, keep an eye out and get them while you can because I don't think it's gonna continue to be a thing. Um, 139 proof. Oh, that sounds hot. Yeah. Yeah, happy to review a flight of anything. <laughs> Definitely see that messy. I'm not an experienced meat drinker. Yeah. But, yeah, I think that about does it for tonight. Again, I think they're all unique. And they're only $35. I, I'm going to say recommend every single one of these. Regular Woodford, recommend. Regular Wheat Woodford, recommend and malt woodford recommend i don't have the rye in front of me but the rye woodford recommend for 35 dollars. i mean honestly if if you're curious about expanding outside of bourbon i think this is a great way to do it especially if you are a fan of regular woodford woodford <laughs> i was reading your comment donnie i said press that like button and i said woodford <laughs> butford uh anyways yeah i think this is a good way to experiment with different types of whiskey some they're probably not the best example of a wheat whiskey or of a malt whiskey but they'll give you an idea of what you may like so that's my recommendation uh uh peter you're tipping me with that 2012 dorsey stag oh that sounds amazing Ugh. you have to have a down vote but hey don't down vote me i mean i'm cool with down votes too i understand it makes sense like not everyone likes this but i have fun doing it and that's all that matters i mean that's what i've convinced myself over the years so the malted rye is not a rye. The malted rye, I'm not sure what you're talking about. The malted, I'm pretty sure the, the you mean the, I'm not talking about the malted rye. I'm talking about the regular Woodford rye. And it's like a low rye rye, like a 51% rye, but it's good. Um, thank you guys for <laughs> shouting out the like button. Appreciate it. Um, yeah, so yeah, try these. If you're watching the replay or if you guys try them after this, feel free to come back and... Uh, oh, I have to downvote one. Sorry, sorry, I missed what you were saying. I can't downvote any of them. I'm sorry. My least favorite was the wheat tonight, but it's not a. It's not a. Don't recommend. It's totally. I, I recommend trying it at least. So that's what I'll say. I don't have to hate on a whiskey. Come on. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Happy repeal day. Happy. Um, holiday season. Like I said, I'll I'll be live next week, so no worries. But. Um, wrapping up the streams for the for the year 
watch out tomorrow or Saturday. I'm releasing a review of the new Goose Island um, bourbon barrel stout. That will be going up either tomorrow or Saturday. So if you're curious about beer, it's aged in Heaven Hill, Wild Turkey, and Buffalo Trace Barrels, I believe. could be wrong. Either way, check that out tomorrow or Saturday. So, (laughs) all right. Talk to you guys later. And until next time, I'm here to help you drink good whiskey. And I always do that. You guys know I always do that. I say until next time, I'm here to help you. And until next time. (laughs) And Woodford Reserve, their whole lineup is great whiskey. Cheers and drink more bourbon or drink more whiskey because it ain't prohibition, y'all. All right. Bye, you guys.